Once you have a bias or a direction in play, there are two types of candles that heavily support price continuing in that specific direction. And in this video, they are the two candles. These are essentially the two candles that I want to focus on. Yeah. Candle number one, candle number two. Essentially, this candle over here is your reversal candle. And this candle over here is your continuation candle. In a bullish trend, for example, if you saw a number of these candles print, they are basically your expansion candles. They are continuing the trend and supporting the trend to go higher. It's even better if you get these candles printing as well. Because if you look at it from a wick, open and close standpoint, here, this reversal candle, the reason why it is a reversal, this is where it opened. To create this large bottom wick, what it simply done was have an aggressive move lower before an aggressive move higher, right? On a lower time frame, this is going to be a significant market reversal. That movement higher from here to here is your expansion of this candle. And then to create the upper wick, price would have a minor retracement to close off. That is how this candle was formed. Hence why I call this candle the reversal candle, because it's giving you extremely strong confluence in price continuing higher. Now, the specific closure of this candle doesn't necessarily matter. However, of course, if it has a bullish closure, then that is going to hold much more higher probability. However, because the characteristics of the wicks doesn't change, aka we still had a large bottom wick, even if this candle closed bearish, then I would still consider that my reversal candle. So to conclude, if you was looking for the trend to continue, these are the two types of candles you ideally want to see, right? This is your continuation or your expansion candle, and this is your reversal candle. These two candles support price to continue in that specific direction. What I don't want to see is of course, if we invert this, if we was in a bullish trend, ignoring this one for now, and here, price prints us this candle with a large upper wick and a minor bottom wick. This is your reversal candle, but in the opposing direction. This is where I would be wary of price continuing higher because what it is showing is here this. If you was overall bullish, when this candle prints, here it has an aggressive move higher before an aggressive move lower. So as you can see from that example, on your lower time frame, this will be an extremely significant market structure break against your overall bullish direction. And what further backs this up is if this happened at a key level, AKA a key drawn liquidity. So let's say here, it happened off a buy side liquidity. The chances of price reversing to go from bullish to bearish from here becomes much more probable because this large wick over here, like I said, shows aggressive movement higher and aggressive movement lower. So that shows buyers were being absorbed at this key level and sellers were coming in and aggressively moving price lower. So if we have a look at examples here, you can see this is exactly what I was talking about. From here, price sweeps this old low and it displaces heavily higher. This displacement higher leaves behind this imbalance over here. The imbalance price retraces to rebalance this imbalance before seeking new liquidity. Remember, two functions in price. I always mention this, rebalancing old inefficiency and seeking new liquidity. And you can see every time we rebalance some sort of an old inefficiency, price displaces heavily higher because we're in a bullish trend. Look at your continuation candles. This is what I was talking about. It leaves behind a large body and minimal wicks. And then once price has rebalanced this old inefficiency, look at what it does. It prints you an expansion candle. And from here, let's keep playing price out and see what it does. It starts to consolidate, but look at what you get here. This high, which is one of your key levels, in the sense that you have your higher low here, higher high here, higher low here, higher high here. That is your basic bullish market structure. So this becomes a significant buy side liquidity. This is a key level. Look at what price does once it's finished consolidating. It gives you a reversal candle. This is the reversal candle I was talking about. Look at what you get here. You get a small body with a large upper wick. This is your bearish reversal candle. And the fact that it happened off of this buy side liquidity, which is a key level, becomes much more significant. This is where you can anticipate for price to reverse from. So here, because that's the case, I would no longer be looking for longs to continue higher because we had this reversal candle 
footprint which opposes our overall direction. If you remember, I mentioned that the close doesn't necessarily matter. You can see here, even though we had a bullish closure, we still left behind a large upper whip. So on a lower time frame, you still had that aggressive movement higher and aggressive movement lower. That aggressive movement higher was to accumulate liquidity over here before reversing to continue lower. However, because we haven't had a market structure break yet to the downside with a full body closure, this isn't confirmed. So what we simply do in this scenario is to wait for more candles to print. And ideally, the type of candles that should be printing are your continuation candles, such as these. And as you can see here, that is exactly what you get there. Heavy displacement lower, continuation candles. Look what you get there. Not every single reversal candle is going to look the same. But the main characteristics it has is that the wick, whether that is the bottom wick or the upper wick, depending on what type of a reversal candle it is, it is going to be larger than your body. It doesn't necessarily sweep out this low, but you have this bullish order block over here. This is a discount rate. Even though we had a market structure break here, because we came into a discount array, this is where you could anticipate for some sort of a bullish reaction. And that is further supported by this large bottom wick, which is larger than its body. So here, you could anticipate for some sort of a retracement, either into this imbalance or these bearish order blocks over here. But again, the same two functions hold. Seeking new liquidity and rebalancing old inefficiencies. So here, even though you had a reversal candle, that doesn't necessarily mean we are completely reversing from here yet. Because in order for that to happen, you have to have a market structure break. That is what confirms the reversal candle. But a reversal candle in this instance, similar to the scenario previously, it will give you some sort of an anticipation for price possibly reversing. Right, so here, it comes into this imbalance. Again, you get a similar candle. Upper wick is larger than the body of this candle. And the fact that this upper wick came into this imbalance when your overall direction is still bearish gives you much more significant in this premium array holding. Because if you're looking at what is currently playing out here, you have this market structure break, so you're bearish. You have these relatively equal lows. And here you have this key premium array level in the form of an imbalance with a reversal candle printing. Upper wick is larger than the body of this candle. So that means it's very likely that this should ideally go next. And this reversal candle was simply just a reversal on your lower time frame to retrace, rebalance this old inefficiency before price continues in your bearish direction. And as you can see here, that's exactly what you get there. Now look at this candle. That is a strong continuation candle. Bearish closure, very large body with minimal wicks. And here, next one, is essentially a reversal candle. Large upper wick, strong bearish body, and minimal lower wicks. So if we look at these examples, the first reversal candle, it has a minimal lower wick and a large upper wick. That is your bearish reversal candle. And then when you have a bullish reversal candle, again, small upper wick and large bottom wicks. And then here, going back to your bearish reversal candles, large upper wicks, right, and minimal bottom wicks. So that is showing you towards the end of this candle's lifespan, buyers were still failing to take price higher. So it's essentially as simple as that. All you're looking for is at certain key levels, how the candles react. Does it leave behind a continuation candle or a reversal candle? Because a lot of the times, let's say you have this imbalance over here. Look at the candles that came past that imbalance. Full body closures, here you even had a reversal candle. And from then onwards, you had continuation candles with another reversal candle. So that is showing you heavy aggression to move price higher, disrespecting this premium rate over here. So that's all you're looking for. Key levels, how do the candles open and close? What are the characteristics of the wicks and the bodies of those candles? This is another example. You have these highs over here. Price just about sweeps those highs. They are your key levels. Buy side liquidity, price sweeps those highs. You don't necessarily get a reversal candle from here. However, after these two candles printed, after sweeping this buy side liquidity, you get a strong continuation candle. This strong bearish continuation candle 
body closure, pass down low. So now it's clear that we have reversed bearish. Body closure passed the low with a continuation candle and price sweeps this buy side liquidity. So now you're in a bearish order flow. If you continue playing price out, there's even more confluence there. Wick rebalances this old imbalance and price seeks new liquidity. Now, price just about has a body closure past that low. But for whatever reason, if you wasn't so confident in price having a body closure past that low, because it was ever so slightly, then you could have waited for your next candle and that would have given you that confirmation required, right? Another continuation candle. So here, this movement alone, we have two strong continuation candles. If you zoom out, you have this low over here. This is where we are starting to get our reversal candle. But because price had had a market structure break here and you're overall bearish, price would need to either aggressively move higher to take out this high to give you a market structure break or heavy displacement disrespecting premium raise and the open of these down candles to give you a change in state of delivery. Until price does that, then this reversal candle is insignificant. You are anticipating for price to continue going lower. But this reversal candle over here at this low could just be a retracement into either this imbalance or this one right here. Right? Like your previous examples. So if you continue to play price out, that is exactly what it does. This is where you could drill down onto your lower time frame. To look for that market reversal at this key premium array level. So here, that's exactly what you get there. Strong continuation candle, market structure break, price is fractal, right? Imbalance. You could have an entry off of here. Stop loss above there. Targeting your overall drawn liquidity. And look at what you get there. Continuation candles come into play again. Because your lower time frame is bearish and your higher time frame is bearish off of a key level. So premium raise should be respected. So after price mitigated this premium rate, you had strong continuation candles lower. And look how we get there. Right, so no matter the time frame, price is fractal, so it will always give you the same type of candles. So those are the two types of candles. Being able to identify the characteristics of the candlesticks, specifically those two types of candlesticks, will provide you with more confluence in what direction price is going to continue in or potentially reverse. But remember, they are not to be used by itself and rather they should always be used in conjunction with your other analysis such as your key levels and your overall direction. So, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care and I will see you guys in the next one.